Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with some fabulous film music. I mean fabulous film music by Jacques Hibert. Does anyone pay attention to Hibert these days other than the divertissement and sometimes Escal and the flute concerto? Those are his three works. But we know so little of Hibert. He wrote a lot of music, and he was an extremely diverse composer who was really, like most French composers, full of, you know, perfect technique and an ear for quality and an interesting concept of taste, as you will find out. This marvelous disc on Naxos um, contains three film scores, uh, which are beautifully rendered for us by Adriano with the Slovak Radio Symphony Orchestra. They are Macbeth, which is really cool. And these are suites that, that Ebert himself put together. There's Macbeth from 1948, Golgotha, which is sort of like the Passion of the Christ sort of thing, from 1935, and then Don Quixote, Don Quixote of 1943. Now, this is the same Don Quixote or Don Quixote that Ravel wrote his songs um, for, um, which never made it into the movie because he couldn't finish them in time, and so they had Hebert do it, and here they are, the same songs, basically. Now, those songs are just delightful, but the main items are Macbeth and, and Golgotha because each of them is, is at least half an hour plus. I mean, it's a serious, lengthy, almost tone poem. Macbeth is extremely harmonically interesting and full of spooky atmospheric effects and not always what you would think, you know, for the, the scene being illustrated. It's a very intriguing score. Adriano thinks it's a masterpiece, and I'm really hard-pressed to disagree with him. It's really marvelous music, and it doesn't sound like anybody else, and, and it's, not, it's not predictable. On the one hand, it isn't predictable, but on the other hand, it seems very well suited to the subject matter. And so it's wonderful to listen to. And Golgotha, well, Golgotha, I mean, you know, that's, that's the Jesus thing. I mean, it's, it's the crucifixion. And so there are opportunities for some really terrifying music. And in fact, uh, the, the, the movements are, let's see, Les Fêtes de Pâques, that's the Easter festival, um, the vendors at the temple, uh, Calvary, and uh, the crucifixion, and then final, the agony, you know, the final, the final death throes of, of Christ, and, and the entombment of Christ, and it requires an Alnd Martineau. Whoa! I mean, you cannot have a crucifixion scene without an Alnd Martineau. I mean, it's essential for that sort of thing. And so I want to play you a little bit. And I'm telling you, this gives us a whole different take on what we, we usually hear from Ibert, because, you know, he's usually considered, because of the divertissement, to be such a frivolous composer, you know, somebody who could only write, you know, sort of wacky keystone cops type music. But I want to play you a little bit of, of the, the agony of Christ. And this is an entirely different, different side to the composer. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got my clips mixed up. Mm -mm. Actually, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's listen to The Agony. Thank you. 
nifty, isn't it? What is it? You know the tune. It's the DS Ire. Da, 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 right? Like that we hear at the end of the Symphony Fantastique and that Rachmaninoff used in everything he ever wrote. And, you know, it's the Day of Judgment Gregorian chant with an old Martino going, wow, 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 like that. I mean, what could be better? It's a fantastically evocative score. And I'm sorry, I had to throw that little, little diversion in there because it really does illustrate just not only what Ebert's range was as a composer, because you can't get more rangy than the divertissement next to the, the death agony of Christ, right? But also how individual he was in both extremes of expression. Because it really is. It's extraordinarily individualistic music. It doesn't sound like anybody else. It's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So I, I love this disc, and I recommend it very, very strongly. It's part of the Naxos Film Music Classics. And, you know, how many how many Jockey Bear film music discs are you going to find? Huh? Not many. But he was a master at this kind of stuff, and, and I recommend this disc extremely highly. I just loved it. I loved it from the beginning. It's a challenging, interesting, evocative, and really individualistic approach to the art of writing for film. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.